Hello, I'm Peter. Welcome to my video page. Today we're going to be looking at how to do a intricate doodle. My style of teaching is more of a uh, I do, you see, you do, you know, watch and learn sort of thing. I don't want to tell you exactly how to draw the lines because that defeats the purpose of art. It's just copying things. So you look, you get inspired, you take and pull the things you do like and then you leave and deride the things you don't like. And then you go draw, all right? That's what I do. I look at, I look at art I do like, but more, most of all, I look at life and then pull a few things. Not just the things I do like, but the things that are interesting or um, invoke some sort of emotional response, I think. But it's not always about emotions. Sometimes I don't get that much into it. It's just about what my eyes like playing over, like sometimes when you run your finger across something and you think, wow, that feels cool. Sometimes I like running my eyes across something and it's just another one of your six senses, five senses. Basically what I did here was I started with a little scribble in the corner and as this thing, this drawing, this doodle, it can be a drawing and a doodle and a piece of art at the same time, it really can. As it all came into form and formation, I realized it kind of looked like um, some sort of city, uh, and well, some, some, some sort of civilization or sh something with some huge hulking mass of a beast kind of walking up onto it from the from the right side there. And so I gradually started embracing this idea of it more and more, adding, making it a little more um, explosive and violent, a little more action here, there, there's little like tentacles and explosions and laser beams. I don't know exactly what's going on, uh, but maybe it's, maybe it is sort of a Godzilla escape. You can, maybe I'll write my own version of that sometime. Mm. Excuse me. I just imagine this great roiling, writhing mass of like black tentacles. It, it seems like it's mostly fluid, but there's some weird solid chunks kind of mixing around in itself and you can kind of make out a face and you think it's looking one direction, but suddenly, you know, you think it's looking away from you, but suddenly you realize it's staring right at you and it scares the crap out of you. And it's, it's so this thing, it's angry at this land and civilization over here. And that civilization probably wronged it uh, some eons ago, and it's back now to exact its revenge on them. But it didn't really do anything wrong. It was just some sort of misunderstanding based on, you know, they stepped on some toes, some weird societal, you know, some custom that they did something wrong. Nobody actually got hurt. Uh, but now some people are going to get hurt and this thing is stepping up on land. It's about 10 or 20 stories tall, maybe a hundred, hundred million story. Who knows how big this thing is? And it steps up on, on the beach scape there, you know, on some people sunbathing, they're gone. And it kind of shakes some of the water droplets off of, it's kind of oily. And so the water just runs off of it and it's like, you know, no one even offers it a towel to help dry off. And this just makes it worse. So the thing just commences to smashing things and consuming the city. It's uh, it's kind of an idyllic, uh, you know, utopian city, I think, because uh, they have no defenses. They never expected to be attacked. And it was... There, you know, it was like their great, 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 great grandparents that accidentally like fished, uh, you know, in the wrong part of the ocean and, you know, dumped their, their six, their little plastic six pack rings into the ocean and it got stuck on one of his ears and it made him angry 600 years ago. And now he's back. He's built up all his energy and uh, they're going to regret it. They don't know what they're regretting, but they are regretting it. Hmm. That's just some of the thoughts running through my head. I have noticed one thing I do sometimes when I'm doodling is I do this kind of clump 
and then sprout thing, right? Draw a bunch of lines really clumped together, and then I get kind of locked down and bored with that one little clump, and then I like either jump to another section of the paper or I actually draw a line leading myself over to another section of the paper, and then start another clump of lines, and then later grow those two clumps together. And I used to, I used to imagine uh, that I was drawing cities and stuff like that, because, um, I don't know, I, and even while I imagine that these clumps of the different parts of the doodles were either like cities or some sort of, um, I, I imagine my doodle was a time lapse of like growing civilizations and stuff like that, and I imagined all the, the, uh, the stories and the history behind everything that was happening, you know. Maybe one line here, maybe that big one you first drew was the main trade route be between them, and here's a coastline, and here's all the little roads linking them all together. Maybe those are buildings and stuff there. Who knows, you know, it all depends on the scale and and what sort of detail you're going into. Even if none of it actually looks like cities or a map. <sighs> it's all in your head, it's fine. In your head and on the paper, there's some sort of link. I guess it goes up through the pen and through your hand and the arm and, and and up to your head. You can imagine it to be wherever you want. For this video, I used a .25 Rotring Isograph. It's, uh, it's the pens I'm pretty into using right now. And I was drawing in my handmade sketchbook, which I'm making some good progress on. I don't know, it feels really good to fill up a sketchbook. And I've really only I filled up one fully, both sides of all pages, and then I filled up one other one, one side of all pages, because the pages were so thin. But really, it, there are so many sketchbooks in my life that I have only drawn on like three of the, the first three pages, or just like three pages in the middle somewhere, or sketchbooks that have a lot in them, but they really truly are sketchbooks. I don't... None of them are like finished. Nothing in there is finished and good. Nothing I feel good about. Or I used a sketchbook for like so many different things and it doesn't feel uh, like you can flip through it and look at them all. It doesn't feel cohesive at all. And maybe that's not what sketchbooks are supposed to be for, but I like sketchbooks like this. I like it when you can hand it to someone and be like, yeah, look, here's some of my drawings and they can flip through it and just have like take a few minutes and kind of be absorbed in it and in your lines and in your drawings. Maybe they get a little glimpse of you. But you gotta be careful though, because maybe they might jump to conclusions. I don't know. Sometimes I worry about that. If like a stranger, f I wonder if it's, I'm not, sometimes I don't know if I should be more worried about a stranger seeing my drawings and jumping to conclusions or someone I know very well who hasn't seen my drawings you know, before or something, seen my drawings and like, Peter. I thought I knew you, but this, this looks so dark. I mean, I don't draw that much dark stuff. Some, t some people think I do, but I don't think I do. I think I, it doesn't matter. I'll just, I just, they're just lines. Sometimes they're in shapes that some, some people would prefer I drew, you know, mermaids and rainbows, but I don't draw as many of that, of that sort of stuff. And it's okay. There's other people drawing those things. And I'm drawing these things. Okay? All right. Mm. That's my first cup of coffee right there. In three days. It's good. All right. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, you know, tweet at me if you draw something. Or if you don't, just say hey. I like you guys all right. You're okay in my book. And I do have a book. Okay. All right.